What's up everyone, welcome back to Just Finish Coding. This is part 7 of our mastermind series on Scratch 3, so let's get coding. Just finished coding. Now quick interjection here, if you've not watched parts 1 to 6, please watch them before you come here because we're picking up from where we left off and you'll be very lost. I'll leave a card for you right here. Please watch the videos and then come right back. If you're still here, I'm going to assume that you've watched parts 1 to 6, in which case this is going to be the last and final part of the Mastermind series and here we'll be finishing up our entire end screen. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, before I move on to the other end screen elements, I'll fix up this, um, you know, this sprite right away. So I'm going to zoom out once again and uh, I'm going to say when I receive, um, player loses and I'll be duplicating this for player wins so it really doesn't matter. So when I receive player loses I'm first going to go to the front layer and remember this isn't going to interfere with our thumbnail because we have this go to front layer within a forever loop in our thumbnail so this is just going to happen once and then our thumbnail is instantaneously just going to be on top of the on top of the end screen element so we won't face any problems with that. So go to front layer and then I will also say go to x0 and y is going to be 180. So right at the top of the screen. And um, after this, I'll be broadcasting a message called show end elements. Okay, so show end elements and uh, you'll, you'll get why I'm doing this, but just copy me for, uh, for now. Show end elements and click OK. And after this, what you can do is to head over to motion and grab this block which says um, uh, glide one seconds to x position, y position. I'm going to keep that to 1 seconds, but I'll be gliding to x0 and y0. Now we have to remember that here we haven't shown it yet, so it's going to be hidden all along. So I'm just going to add in a show right here. And you can actually reverse this, it really isn't going to make a big change, but this is the better way to put it, you know, the motion after you broadcast the message. Anyway, so once you're done with this, you can duplicate it and just change that to be player wins because this end screen element is going to do the same exact thing. And before I move on to the next sprite, I'm going to duplicate the show move enter and I'll be saying uh, create a new message and this message is going to be called close. Because remember at the end screen we're going to have a close on top. So in case the player wants to you know, exit the end screen and look at his code once again, he can just press the close button. So yeah, this would do exactly that. And now we can uh, move on with the next end screen element and the one that I'm going to import is going to be the, um, the you win uh, or you lose element. And you can just change this to be um, end message. That's what I'll call it. And uh, within the costumes, I will be importing the you lose um, you lose costume as well. So import um, or you know upload costume you lose. There we go. And now I'm gonna head over to the code and say when I receive show move enter, then I will be hiding. So when I receive show move enter hide, and I will be doing the same thing when I receive close. So when I receive close, then we'll hide as well. All right, now it's time for the main part of our code, which is when I receive the show end uh, elements message. So in this case, what I'm going to do first is to go to the front layer, because remember, we're going to do the same thing. But what this is going to do is we'll make sure that the thumbnail is um, above us or in front of us, because the thumbnail is within a forever loop. But this is going to make us go above the um, the end screen, what did I call it? Yeah, just end screen. This is going to make it go above the end screen, but below the thumbnail. So that's pretty much what we want. So add in a go to front layer. And uh, what I'll do in, in addition to that is to um, add in a set ghost effect. Where's that? Yeah, set ghost effect to 100. So set ghost effect to 100. And I'll add in a show right after that. Okay. And now before this, what I'm going to do is uh, I will be going to x is going to be a 0 and y is going to be 100. Okay, so that's going to be our two coordinates. And after this, I'll add in a repeat. So repeat 20 and I'll be changing the ghost effect by 5 each time or negative 5 each time. So change ghost effect by, um, oops, change ghost effect by negative 5 each time. And that is going to be the main part of the show end elements code. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is to make sure that this switches to the correct costume. So this is going to be easier said than done because here if we just check for the move number, then we won't be able to win if the player has, you know, one in move number 10, which is not what we want. 
So you can set up a new uh, variable for all sprites and this is going to be called has one, okay? And add in a question mark after that to signify that it is a Boolean variable. And now you can head over to the initializer right on top and within this begin function, just say set has one to be no. So if this is, you know, no, then it means that the player has not won. And now you can head over to the, um, to the end screen. And when we receive player loses, then we can, um, okay, not player loses. When we receive player wins, then we can set has won to be yes. And this will make sure that we know whether the player has won or not using the has won variable. So now I'm gonna scroll down back to the end screen message. And here I'll be having an if then condition or rather an if else condition. So I'll be saying if, um, if um, the has one variable is equal to yes, then we will switch costume to you win. So if has one is yes, then switch costume to you win. And if has one is no, then we will switch costume to you lose. And yep, that is pretty much going to be it. And I'm going to test it out really, really fast. So I'm going to enter in some, you know, random code. Let's go ahead with this. And when we try and win this, I'm going to try to win. Okay, just change this by one. And there we go, we have a U win set up. And once again, if I try to lose, and I'll actually be cutting this video right here so that you guys can directly come to the, you know, ending. You can see that when we finally enter in the correct code and then click OK, we change into a U win despite it being the last move. Now, once again, there's one final test to do, and that is to make sure that uh, when we, you know, lose, our code isn't coming in as a win. And I'm going to just cut this video just like I did once again. Okay, I'm going to lose on the 10th move and you can see that we switched uh, the costume to you lose. Perfect. So this thing works completely, um, completely perfectly. And now we can uh, move on to the next, um, to the next um, costume, uh, not, not next costume, to the next sprite. And I'm going to delete that first costume and then upload costume once again. And I'm not entirely sure what happened to that uh, costume, you know, picture right there. But anyway, let's move on. So this one is going to be not the play again but it's going to be the code text. Yep, that's what I think it is. Yep, this one. Um, now I'm gonna delete the you win message and I'm gonna uh, change it into the code itself. All right, I had some trouble with my computer once again there, but now our costumes and everything is fixed up. So now we can remove these two um, conditions from, um, the, from the, you know, show move elements message because we really just have one costume. I mean, we don't have to change it to anything. I'm going to rename the sprite to be code text because that is pretty much what it signifies. So code text. And after this, I'll be changing just this uh, position. So our position is going to be X 60 and Y is going to be negative 50. So that's going to be the position here. And once again, we'll be doing all of this. But in addition, I'll be adding a weight lag. Now keep in mind that this weight is going to depend completely on how fast your system is. So if you have a very slow system, you might want to bump this up. And you, if you have a very slow system, um, I mean, if you have a very fast system, then you have to, um, you have to reduce this. But for me, 0.5 works fine. And if you have a decent laptop, this should be the case for you as well. So I'm going to go ahead um, and do that. And that is pretty much all we'll need to change here. We'll just add in a small time lag and then do the exact same thing with um, in this particular position. Okay, so now you can duplicate this once again. And here you can head over to the costumes and you can upload a costume and change this to the play again button. So this is our play again button, very simple as you can see. Uh, and when we uh, click show, and I'm gonna do that in a second. So click show. Um, okay, I'm not entirely sure where this is. Okay, yeah, you can see that it's a pretty decent size and we don't really have to even resize this. So I'm gonna say play, but uh, play again, that's what I'm gonna call it. Okay, and now I'm gonna head over to the code and just uh, make this time lag one second instead of 0.5 seconds. Now we need to go to a different position, obviously. So it's going to be negative 125, comma negative 135 for this particular sprite. And for our play again, um, play again sprite, uh, we need to add an additional uh, script of code because here, if we uh, if we click that sprite, then it's going to you know basically play play once again. So we need to do that uh, part right here. So now what I'm going to do is to make a new variable once again for this sprite only. And this is going to be called can be clicked. So it's going to be a Boolean variable. So I'm going to add in a question mark. I'll be hiding that. And when we receive show more enter, I'll be setting can be clicked to be no. And right here, when we uh, finish up with this animation, I'm going to set can be clicked to be yes. Okay. 
that's going to be the essential idea and now i'm going to head over to events and i'm going to grab a when sprite is clicked so when this happens i'll be first checking if the can be clicked variable is set to yes and if it is set to yes so if can be clicked is set to yes um, if it is then what i'll essentially be doing is just broadcasting is initialize so broadcast initialize a so new message initialize and um, yep initialize and what i'm going to do after this is just um hide this as well so i'd uh, go to looks and then click um then grab a hide and that is pretty much all you'll need right here the last thing you need to do is to duplicate the sprite one last time and then click on uh, costumes and then upload the close button so you can click on close.svg and um, delete that uh, play again costume i'm going to rename this to be close and yep everything is going to be uh, very very similar we we'll even have the weight lag set exactly the same um, but this can be clicked variable is not going to be doing this broadcasting initialize instead what we'll be doing is to broadcast close and then we will hide and that is pretty much all you will need so now i'm going to click the green flag enter in some random code and guess it on the first attempt so i'm going to guess this so just enter in four reds you know and then click ok so now you can see a U win and yep, our close is on the wrong spot. But if we click close, you can see that we close everything and we can't enter in the move. And also if we click on, actually, let me update that position first. So that position is going to be X215 and Y is going to be, um, I believe 160. So right at the top, right. And before I press the green flag to test out my code, I'm going to head over to the code hider. And uh, here I'm going to hide my code. So I'm going to start off by receiving or uh, player wins or player loses. You can do either one and then duplicate it. I'm going to start with player loses and I'm going to say repeat 10 times change ghost effect by negative um, 10. So it's uh, slowly going to hide. Actually change ghost effect, I believe by 10. I think that's what slowly fades that away. So um, where's that? Yeah, change ghost effect by 10. So ghost effect and 10. So this is going to slowly make, uh, make this fade away and we will do the same thing when we receive player wins as well. And now we can finally test out our mastermind code. I'm gonna hit the green flag, enter in the simplest code possible, then actually, you know, put in that code, click okay, and boom, our actual code hides as well. And when we close our program, you can see that everything is set up perfectly. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be your entire mastermind game. That went on for a bit longer than I thought it would, but I do hope that you've enjoyed this entire playlist and you have actually made your entire mastermind game successfully. If you've enjoyed this game series, then make sure you click on the playlist on your screen right here and that'll take you to a brand new game segment. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next series.